and today I would like to talk to you about the famous stereotype that the German language sounds aggressive. On the internet you find countless cartoons and videos in which the creators compare certain daily life words in different languages. And well, German always appears to be ridiculously harsh. For example, a real classic, the German word for butterfly. In videos like that it'll go like this. The butterfly. La mariposa. La farfalla. Le papillon. Der Schmetterling. Der Schmetterling. And to that I have to say that firstly different languages have different roots. It's not like German is making up all these words randomly. There is a reason behind all of that. And secondly, in all of this content the pronunciation of the German words is of course extremely exaggerated. Normally Germans don't scream and snarl when talking about butterflies. Who would have guessed? This intense acting makes 80% of the aggression, not the word itself. You know, I as a German could also turn this whole thing around and make a video like this. La mariposa. La farfalla. Le papillon. Der Schmetterling. The butterfly. The butterfly. The butterfly. See? Doesn't feel that great, does it? Well, admittedly, the effect is not completely the same. The German language does sound a bit edgier than other languages because we have a lot of krch sounds in it. However, what I want to say is that if you want something to sound harsh, you can easily make it sound harsh. Except for the word bubbles, of course. You cannot say bubbles in an aggressive way. Bubbles! 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 <laughs> it always ends up sounding funny. Okay, but enough talking. In today's video I want to finally turn the tables. I'm going to give you examples for German words that are commonly claimed to sound super aggressive compared to other languages with words for the same thing. And then tell you why these words are not ugly at all, but in fact the most awesome to describe what they mean. 3, 2, 1, go. The science. La ciencia. La scienza. La science. Die Wissenschaft. The German word die Wissenschaft and all of this science stuff sounds quite differently, but actually the etymology is pretty similar. Science derives from the Latin word skire, to know, which is exactly what wissen means in German. If you then make a noun out of it, it becomes the knowledge. Schaft is just a German suffix, nothing important to say about that, but even though it's not related, Schaft also sounds a bit like the third person singular of the German verb schaffen, which can mean to accomplish or to create something. So although the Schaft in Wissenschaft is not written with a double F, it makes the word sound like it is related to accomplish something or to create something by using your knowledge, your brain. And that, my friends, is a really nice summary for what science is all about, isn't it? The German language is beautiful. I'll make you understand that today. Next, the truck or the lorry. El camion. Il camion. Le camion. Der Lastkraftwagen. First of all, no one says Lastkraftwagen in German. We use LKW, which is short for it. And even if we did, Lastkraftwagen is a pretty suiting word for the vehicle it describes. I looked it up and I found out that the average Lastkraftwagen is 16.5 meters long. Casual cars, on the other hand, only measure an average length of about 4 meters. So their Lastkraftwagen is more than 4 times longer than das Auto. And so is the name. Auto. Small. Lastkraftwagen. Huge. But Trixie, you can also call a normal car der Personenkraftwagen in German and that's... Shh. The hospital. El hospital. Il hospitale. L'hôpital. Das Krankenhaus. In this case, I agree that the German word sick house doesn't sound that appealing. But on the other hand, the English name is kind of misleading. Hospital derives from the Latin word hospice, which means host or guest. And there are other words related to it, meaning hospitality, guest room, or even hotel. I don't know which hospitals you have been during your life, but in the ones I have been, they didn't feel like hotels at all. You know, when you are in a hospital, you normally feel like shit, not like you're on vacation. And the food and the friendliness of the staff also don't really resemble the hotel situation. You know, the German word at least includes exactly what it is. A place where the sick and injured go when they need help. And I don't really understand why the term krank is such a problem here. I mean, when you're in a hospital, it's not really a secret that you're either ill or wounded. I just don't recall it being an insult if you're referred to are sick and you're actually being sick. <coughs> <coughs> Poor Trixie, it sounds like a cold. You're sick, huh? How da <coughs> How dare you <coughs> calling me sick? Uh, okay. It may give you the wrong vibes. Would be better to call it like 
Heilhaus, Healing House or something, all positive and optimistic that everyone's gonna be fine again. But then again, being sick also means that you have to take seriously that you're sick and work on changing that fact if you can. Do you know what I mean? Let's just move on. The turtle. La tortuga. La tataruga. La tortu? Die Schildkröte. Die Schildkröte is on this list, really? Yes, it sounds differently, but it literally means shielded toad. Tell me that's not awesome. Sounds like a warrior toad. That's super cute and way better than turtle. Turtle sounds like turd. <laughs> Burn, English language. Burn. The imagination. La imagination. La imaginazione. L'imagination. Die Vorstellungskraft. And again, yeah, there is a difference in what the words sound like, but Vorstellungskraft doesn't sound aggressive. If you know what it means, it's actually really beautiful. Die Vorstellung simply is the German word for the imagination. And then you can add Kraft to it, which means power or strength, which I think makes it much more amazing of a word. When you imagine something, it's not just colorful thoughts that disappear at some point. No, there is much more to it. It's like a force coming from your inside, coming from your heart, making you dream and imagine things. So why not call this force the power or the strength, which is die Kraft, the imagination power. That word teaches me that if you have a good idea, if you allow your mind to dream, that's much more valuable than muscles or might. You can achieve everything by using the force of your mind, your dreams. Aggressive sounding or not, I feel like the German word has so much more to offer and people are not seeing that. The air mattress. La coltonetta. Il matrissino pneumatico. Le matelas pneumatiques. Die Luftmatratze. Me, 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 me. The German word for air mattress sounds so aggressive. Have you recently slept on one? The word for air mattress should be ugly, seriously. It's not like you're sleeping on a bed made out of clouds. All these nasty squeaky sounds when you try to get comfy on it. You almost faint because the air pump is broken. You have to fill the whole thing with your very own breath. But still, no matter how tense you make it, you sink down to the floor the moment you lay down on it. Then in the middle of the night, all the air is suddenly gone because there was a teeny tiny hole on the bottom. Luftmatratze. The butterfly. La mariposa, la farfalla, le papillon, der Schmetterling. First of all, the word butterfly is not a beautiful word either. It sounds like a fly that got stuck on a piece of butter. Now that that elephant is out of the room, let me tell you why I love the word Schmetterling so much. You see, der Schmetterling sounds like a combination of Schmettern and Ling. Schmettern is a very powerful word. It means to clash or to dash, while Ling is used to describe something weak or tiny, like, for example, der Däumling. So we have some sort of yin and yang situation going on here. On one side, the weak and tiny, and on the other side, the powerful and destructive. With a bit of fantasy, the German word Schmetterling basically teaches you all about the butterfly effect. One tiny butterfly can cause a hurricane. You may be small, you may be weak and fragile as a Schmetterling, but that doesn't mean that you cannot kick ass. Don't underestimate the small and weak, for there may be a huge unseen force inside of them. So, rabbits, what do you say? Did I change your mind about these aggressive-sounding German words a bit? Or do you still say that German sounds aggressive and it has this harsh connotation that it cannot get rid of? What other German words or words taken out of the language that you speak can you think of that I claim to sound aggressive as well? And maybe you can make up a little story yourself as well, trying to understand why that's not the case and why they're actually beautiful? I really hope that you liked today's video. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. If you want to watch another video of Don't Trust the Rabbit, you can find one right here. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook or even support my channel on Patreon, which would mean so, so much to me. Now I wish you all a very beautiful day. Check out my other videos if you'd like to and hopefully we are going to see each other in my next one. Bye!